Hi, this is Steve. Hey, it's just over a year since we purchased our Bayliner 4788, and I thought I would do a quick video kind of recapping some of the stuff that we've done in the last year, either adventures with the boat or repairs or rehab that we had to do uh, on the boat. Buying a boat like this was a pretty big step up from us. Our previous boat was a Bayliner 2802 Trophy, and jumping up to a 50-foot boat is a bit of a jump from that. So what we did in January, we were really busy shopping for uh, shopping for the boat. We went to the Seattle Boat Show. This was pre-COVID, so we could still do things like that. Uh, we toured a lot of boats uh, from Blaine to Anacortes and Gig Harbor. And uh, we knew that we wanted about this size and the selection of boats. It was interesting because there weren't that many boats for sale in that 50-foot range in the Pacific Northwest Puget Sound area, well, at least within our price range. If we didn't have a budget, uh, of course, there would have been a lot more available. So in February, we ended up going to San Diego uh, to shop for boats and to get some sun. When we were down there, we viewed about 15 different boats with several different dealers, and uh, we looked at boats in the range of 40 foot to 59 foot, uh, and really what we came down to was the conclusion was that 40 foot was too small of a boat for what we were looking for, and that the 59 foot boat that we looked at, uh, or the 56s, were too big for what we were looking for or what we were comfortable moving up to. So we kind of settled in like the 47 to 53 range. After that trip, uh, we came back and decided that the Bayliner 4788 that we looked at in Blaine was the one we wanted. Uh, so we made an offer on it. Uh, we ended up buying it and uh, bringing it home in March. And uh, when we brought it home, we started doing some repair on things. Maybe we should have done a little bit better test drive, and in retrospect, maybe we should have had a mechanic look it over. Because uh, I thought that the survey covered those kind of things, and it turned out that it didn't. So that's my fault for not doing the research there. Uh, but if you're going to buy a boat of any size with like this, definitely have a mechanic look over the engines. We found out later that there's about, uh, I don't know, twelve to $15,000 worth of engine repair that we had to do uh, just to make the boat safe to use. Uh, there were some problems with diesel turbo air injector area where it does the cooling for it and uh, had it not been repaired, uh, it was at the point that it could have started sucking seawater into the air intake going into the engines, and that would have completely destroyed the engines. Uh, so that's getting taken care of right now, actually, hopefully to be done soon. Uh, but anyway, back to our story here. March and April. April was really all about getting the boat ready. Uh, we were a little bit confused with the whole COVID lockdown and what that meant for uh, going out and going boating, and it turned out it really didn't impact boating too much other than like places we could go marinas and resorts and things like that in the San Juans so we started working on getting the dinghy repaired and running and then uh, changing the name and uh, upgrading to some solar panels because where we keep the boat in the summer we don't have power on the dock so uh, we get keep everything fully charged with solar so anyway the, the dinghy that was one of the first challenges uh, we ran into a problem where First, the battery was dead, and then we tracked that, got a new battery, and found out that that was not the only problem. Then the wires going from the battery to the starter solenoid, those were uh, so corroded that the over 12 volts, roughly around 13 volts coming from the battery, uh, was only making about one volt to the starter solenoid. So we replaced that, and then it turned out there was another wire between the starter solenoid and the starter that we had to replace. No big deal there. We got that going. Uh, and then we were able to get the engine started. We then found out there were more problems uh, with the shifter unit that mounts on the side where the key goes in and all that. The wires going to the engines were so corroded there that they couldn't be repaired. Uh, so what we had to do was replace the whole shifter unit. And once we got that, a few wires replaced and a shifter unit replaced on the side of the dinghy, the dinghy starts and runs beautifully. And li literally, when you turn the key, it is like a half second before that engine is started and running. Probably the quickest starting outboard that I've ever owned. Uh, we went through the renaming of the boat. We changed the name at the time of purchase. Uh, the previous name was Falcon uh, out of Seattle. Uh, and we changed the name to Off Leash. And there's a picture of George uh, helping me out with uh, doing the off-leash vinyl. Uh, a few years ago, when we needed a boat name for a previous boat, we bought a vinyl cutter. Uh, so rather than having to pay a lot for someone to do to go and make these and then pay more if you made a mistake, uh, we just 
made the vinyl ourselves uh, through the vinyl cutter machine. Uh, George helped a lot with that. So the name sticks on. The stuff you can see there that's kind of a grid, that's the, the layout tape. And once the vinyl sticks, you peel that off and it looks good. There's kind of the final picture of what that looked like. And there's a little bit, when we first put it on, there's a little bit of air bubbles in there, and those kind of work out over time. One of the things we found after putting on the name was we had goofed on one of the letters, and it kind of damaged it, so we had to recut one of the letters and put it back on uh, on one of the Fs. No big deal, but had we not had the vinyl cutter there to do it ourselves, it would have taken some time and cost us to have someone redo it. Yeah, so we got the solar panels going as well in at that point in April. Uh, two solar panels right in front of the pilot house windows, and then we had four solar panels on the roof of the pilot house. A total output of about 660 watts possible on a perfect day. Uh, generally, we're getting about 400 to 450 watts on a nice, nice day coming out of that uh, to keep the batteries charged. All right, moving on to May. Well... We had our first shakedown cruise, as we called it, to Susha Island in May. And that was the point that we found out that, yeah, our solar panels are working great to charge the batteries, uh, but the batteries just were not holding a charge. They, Looking at it, they hadn't been wired correctly, so they had probably worn out in uneven levels. And uh, it turned out that even after running the generator and getting the batteries fully charged, uh, we discovered that they wouldn't hold a charge for more than an hour or so, even though we had uh, four of these big uh, 8D batteries. The other thing that we found out uh, was that our generator failed on that first trip, too. We ended up getting it fixed, but what it was is the wire between the generator and the starting battery, again, another corrosion point, uh, it just wasn't getting enough power through to the starter. So uh, we ended up replacing the, or at least cleaning off the terminals and getting it to start, uh, and then later we ended up uh, replacing the uh, the starting cables there. But here's an example, the pictures here of this black wire that uh, should be all shiny copper or more appropriately in newer boats, shiny tinned copper. It, you can just see in the middle, and that's like four feet in on one of the starting cables that I've got that cut picture there. You can just see how black and corroded that copper is, and it's just not getting power moving very well. Uh, another thing we did in May after our first trip and realizing how super uncomfortable the beds were, uh, we ended up buying two queen mattresses uh, online that were these uh, memory foam mattresses. And they weren't exactly the right size for the bed, but because of COVID at that point, uh, we didn't have, the, I mean, a lot of the shops that were making custom boat mattresses were uh, out of shut down or not available at that point in time so what marcia did is she pulled out the old mattresses and you can see that one in the picture there how stained and ugly that is uh and then we unrolled the queen mattress and unzipped the edge of it uh and then using a bread knife just to cut through the foam we were able to cut the foam on the new queen mattresses to the exact shape of the original mattresses uh but we just ended up with two to three times the thickness, so we had a super comfortable bed rather than something that felt like sleeping on a 30-year-old uh, camping mattress, which was about what that was. So the mattress improvement, to me, that was one of the absolute best things we did, on at least comfort-wise comfort on the boat for the whole year. Uh, another thing we did, and you can see the pictures here of the boat chain, uh, another thing we did that helped me sleep better on the boat was replacing the chain. Uh, you can see that picture in the center there. We can see the shiny new chain compared to the old chain. Uh, that's probably the original chain on the boat, and it was pretty corroded. And it had me pretty concerned with whether it would hold the boat or not. So then moving on to June, June was a good time. We didn't do a lot of maintenance in June, fortunately, uh, but we did get a couple of trips on the boat. Uh, one of them was uh, Prevost Harbor on Stewart Island, uh, which is some of the pictures you're seeing here. Uh, with the sunset in the top. Uh, and then after that, our next trip was to Roach Harbor, uh, which was a really uh, fun trip. Uh, in July, we ended up doing a trip, a family trip down to Kayak Cove near Stanwood, uh, and then another trip to Roach Harbor later in July. And uh, we also uh, updated the batteries a bit more in the boat. So uh, we ended up with a total of... Um, Oh, when we replaced the those 8D batteries that were bad, we ended up putting in, uh, for each 8D, we put in three of these 6-volt starter batteries, and we ended, or sorry, 6-volt six, six golf cart batteries, and we ended up wiring them in uh, sort of a parallel series combination. So you ended up with 12 volts, 
and lots of amps out of a total of 12 of these 6 volt batteries. Uh, supposed to work really well with discharging and recharging and all that for a longer period of time uh, than other batteries. Uh, and yeah, they seem to be working really, really well. Uh, in August, we ended up doing a trip to Susha uh, Island just for a day trip and then uh, over to Deer Harbor and then on to Roach Harbor for uh, another trip. We turned out that uh, maybe the boat had been sitting for a little while, but uh, we found out that the uh, toilet in the master head was uh, had failed. And initially it would look like we tried doing a rebuild kit and the rebuild kit didn't quite match the age of the toilet that was there. So we ended up having to completely replace the toilet. Way more hours than I would, would have liked to have spent on it. Too much money on the rebuild kit, which ended up being a complete waste. The good news is we got it replaced and we now have a functioning toilet. And looking at the age of the toilet in the other head, uh, yeah, it's newer, much newer. It looks like it had probably been replaced a few years ago. So I think these things had just failed over time. Uh, we also did a bunch of lighting in the cockpit area in the back. You can see, uh, so you can see kind of the lights going up the steps. Uh, we replaced them and here's an example of after the replacement the light fixtures we had had incandescent bulbs in them but we had some replacement LED bulbs so you can see the top picture is what came in the fixtures we ordered uh, and then replacing the bulbs inside of them uh, got it up to a much brighter scenario and using a lot less power so here's an example of the incandescent bulb versus the LED bulb uh, and just here's two of them side by side and this the, the difference in color that we see uh, on those lights. After that the other thing we found is that uh, and there's this filtration here holding tank vent filter. It found out We found out as we went out with the boat uh, we really discovered that uh, it smelled a lot like a sewer uh, every time we used the boat and we tried a variety of different tank odor things and they helped a little bit but they really didn't do the job that well. So what we found was that the odor was coming out of the holding tank vent on the side of the boat uh, and that's just a little half inch hose that comes up and lets air out when you flush the toilet and water goes in. So we found this filter and ended up buying it on Amazon and it basically mounts in line into the hose that goes to that vent filter and it has charcoal filters in there like <clears throat> like you might have in a fish tank type charcoal filters and any air moving through there uh, gets filtered with that and after installing that filter there is no stench of sewer on the boat anywhere at all and that that little filter was probably one of the biggest uh, biggest improvements uh, stench wise overall on the boat for the year uh, and the filter it's a filter you're supposed to replace about once a year as we're coming up on the year here, I've got a spare ready to replace, but you, now that it's, after it's been installed, uh, it's quick and easy. You just unscrew two hose fittings on the end, similar to a garden hose, screw it back together, uh, and replace it with a new one, and you're done. Very, very big improvement on the, uh, the foul smell from the sewer on the boat. Uh, other things we did uh, is the uh, upstairs stereo. Uh, was full of water and it had a lot of damage to it. The VHF radio up top did not work at all. So what we ended up doing was replacing them. Let's see if we can look at the image here. Uh, replacing the upper panel. There's an example of the Fusion stereo that we put in. It's really great for connecting to your phone for streaming. Uh, and then we put in some USB ports down below it there. Uh, and then September, uh, getting a little bit later in the season, uh, we had another trip to Roach Harbor uh, early on, I think, Labor Day. Uh, and then we had another trip uh, where we ended up going to Susha Island and then on to Roach Harbor later in the month. Got some cool lights that we hang off the back of the boat. So uh, you put them in the water at night and they, they light things up and uh, they're really cool for attracting fish and seeing what's, uh, what's around down there. Uh, we also did the, the Simrad upgrade uh, earlier we'd put in a new Simrad VHF radio, but here uh, we got a 16-inch Simrad uh, chart plotter depth finder, uh, and this was really, really a big improvement over what we had on the boat. 
Uh, right here, these two screens are what we had previously. And this depth finder, it was factory installed, I'm sure. This uh, chart plotter, it didn't even work. Every time you turn it on, it would power cycle like 30 seconds later. So uh, both of those got ripped out. Uh, here's the hole in the dashboard. We had to cut the hole a little bit bigger to get the uh, Simrad NSS-16 in there. Uh, and then here's the picture down at the bottom showing it what it looks like. Here we are underway uh, near Spiden Island there showing our chart. But yeah, that was a real big, big improvement. But also, not just an improvement over what we had there, but a foundation for what's coming later. Because uh, later we've got radar and autopilot and things like that that hook into that same unit. Continuing on after that, uh, after those trips, we then uh, retired the solar panels for the season uh, and moved our boat over to a different dock uh, for the winter where we have power that we can keep the boat warm. Yeah, the solar panels, the way they were installed, they were kind of done in a way that they wouldn't hold up with the winter storms. So after moving it to the winter storage, we ran into a problem with the Wabasto uh, diesel heater, and we ended up having to replace the computer on there uh, to get it to work. And then that brings us to our winter maintenance section. So we started out, this is the beginning of January, we didn't really do much in December, but we started working on the autopilot replacement. And uh, we knew that the autopilot didn't work when we bought the boat, but we thought it would just be some kind of electrical problem or something. But after tracking it down, we found out that this corroded thing in the top pictures here was the autopilot computer, uh, which was mounted down in the bilge uh, in a point that uh, if you got a little bit of water in the bilge uh, or you had water leaking through from your back deck in the cockpit area, uh, it's pretty likely that uh, it got drenched with salt water. And what somebody had done is they'd taken a Tupperware container and kind of mounted it upside down above there because it was obviously a problem keeping it dry. But it was just totally fried. So we pulled that out. Uh, we pulled out the autopilot devices in the pilot house and on the flybridge. And we got the Simrad... NAC 3 autopilot computer and installed new rudder feedback, new onboard compass, hooked up the autopilot computer and linked it into the existing the existing pump that runs the steering back and forth from the old autopilot. It looks like that's in good shape and that that's working. So we now have autopilot that's integrated and working through the uh, Simrad device on the screen there. Another thing in January, I ordered some crew shirts, just kind of having fun. Here's what our shirts look like for uh, on board or guests or anybody who comes on. Uh, I've got a variety of these. Uh, just nice to have some boat shirts there with a picture of the boat on the back of it. Then we did more work on the electronics. We had the and also during this time, we've had we've got a mechanic that's been working on the engine and the engine's been taken apart and a number of parts have been ordered. Uh, waiting for those to arrive. Uh, while we're doing that, we're trying out things. We're doing things like installing new radar. So we hooked up a new radar up on the flybridge on the radar arch. Here's the old unit, and here's what the new unit looks like. Uh, we weren't quite done at this point. Uh, this light that's in the back with a little antenna on it, that came off after we got the light mounted up on the very top of the, the new radar pole there. And uh, very cool having an integrated radar with the chart plotter so we can see charts and radar overlapped at the same time to see what's going on. Uh, a lot easier to read. But combine that with our uh, autopilot, we can now navigate and be able to see objects and obstacles in the water. Uh, even when there's like almost no visibility with the fog, we'll be able to see things with the radar. Uh, here's what the top pictures with the radar arch look like before. And afterwards, the radar arch only had one item on it, this little post that pops up with the Simrad on it. And then above that is it sticks up with our anchoring light. And here's uh, kind of a comparison of what the old radar looked like. Uh, very hard to work with, but probably really nice 25 years ago. And then uh, later in January, I started replacing some lights on board. We started in the kitchen. Uh, there's these old yellowed lights, which probably originally had incandescent bulbs in them, and then somebody had replaced them uh, before we bought the boat with some LED bulbs, but they were still really, really yellow and 
from the aged plastic and the plastic this kind of yellow plastic around the edges most of them were pretty cracked and the new pieces that we ended up replacing them with were uh, the silver ring comes off but the entire light fixture part is sealed so there's no way to get any dirt or any bugs or anything like that inside of the light these were a really great improvement and they really change the look of the kitchen so while we're waiting for the engine work still getting done uh, we're going and fixing more stuff so uh, the pilot house door wheel rollers so on the side of the pilot house on the port side this door has never ever never worked really well since we bought the boat so uh, one day in January we pulled that door off George and I did uh, we brought it home to the garage and worked on it and we found that this is the problem right here there's this roller that's totally corroded there's bearings in there they're totally corroded it doesn't turn at all so we ended up finding replacement pieces for this here's the exact measurements of what were needed to make it work we replaced those two of them on that door the door moves really really well now the one thing we ran into is a couple of the screws broke so we had to uh, re-tap a couple of the screws that hold this in place uh, to put it back together so that ended up taking a little bit longer on the project than expected we we got it good. It's it's straightened out now. After that, we started putting together kind of a pre-season to-do list with stuff that we needed to do. New filters on all the fuel filters, including the diesel furnace and the generator. Uh, the diesel furnace and the generator are done. Right now, I've got the fuel filters for the port and starboard engines just sitting there ready to do once the engine gets fixed. I want to wait until the engine's running before I try and replace those because I don't want to add anything to complicate uh, what's going on there. Uh, with the engine being worked on. Uh, re we replaced a lot more lights. We still have more to go. These are uh, just kind of expensive and taking some time to get through all of them. We still need to check all the levels on the lead acid batteries to make sure the house battery bank is good. Uh, we've got some work to do still on the hydronic hose replacement. Some other things we've done. Uh, we replaced the vent fan for the two heads. Uh, it turns out the bathroom vent, or head vent as it's called, it's just a bilge blower. Bilge, yeah, bilge blowers can be really, really loud, but I think what was happening was the bearings were going out on this, and uh, when you turned on the fan in either of the heads, it just was really loud sound throughout the whole boat. So we got that replaced. It's still kind of the normal level of a blower, but it's not as loud as it was before. We've also uh, got a new starter battery in for the generator. That was uh, one of the three batteries on board that we hadn't replaced uh, so that's done electric heater replacement two of the heaters here's an example of one of them we replaced that's been done uh, the electric heater in the pilot house and the electric heater heater in the hallway at the bottom of the stairs uh, we'll see some pictures of those in a little bit uh, some things we still want to do are replacing the washer and dryer uh, replacing the carpet throughout and then doing new canvas and we originally thought we could get another year out of the canvas but uh, with a bit of a windstorm our canvas got destroyed so uh, before winter we're going to need new canvas on the boat new heater in the pilot house just able to find the exact replacement model from Amazon took it apart put it in and it works great in the pilot house on the dashboard where the previous autopilot controls were we then had a hole left so we ended up replacing that and uh, replacing the hole where, where the autopilot was with a little USB charging device uh, that shows us the battery voltage and got some USB chargers and a normal plug-in for a 12 volt lighter connector for other things we may need to charge uh, this is the heater on the stairs that we replaced kind of right there you can see the before and after and when you look at this you can see how much crud and lint is in there and I don't know why this heater wasn't working but had it been generating any heat it would have been a complete fire hazard because of the amount of lint and crud inside of there so after seeing this one I went and cleaned out the other heaters the two that we did not replace to make sure that they didn't have that same hazard new fuel filter for the generator uh, February we got that installed and I like to now make mark every filter when I install it with when it was installed so that I know been or if it's been more than a year it's time to go and get that replaced just so we don't get to the point that we're having to replace it as an emergency uh, one of the things that we continued on lighting after doing the kitchen I went on and did the lighting upgrade in both of the bathrooms or the heads 
And after doing that, uh, here's the before and after with kind of the color you can see here, this yellowed look with one of them falling out of the ceiling to now they're all uh, replaced and solid. The thing we really discovered after doing the lights was how bad the mirrors looked. I hadn't really paid much attention to until we until we got the lights in there, but we'll jump ahead to the uh, mirror replacement. And this is one, look at how nice those mirrors look now. Uh, this is one where we were able to take out each of these pieces just by unscrewing a few things and sliding them out, uh, as well as in the master head. I think it was a total of six mirror pieces. No, five mirror pieces, these four plus one from the master. And we took those to a local glass shop. Uh, and for a reasonable price, just under $300, uh, they were able to replace the mirrors on all of those and uh, make that look much newer and nicer than we'd seen before. But as you can see, after doing that, there's always one more thing that's next. The wallpaper, there's a bit of mildew on the wallpaper that's showing up there. That's one of them on our future to-do lists. With the boat being on the dock and uh, wanting to make sure that it didn't freeze, because I've heard stories from people with broken pipes, and although we put the pink antifreeze into the water system, there's always a chance that freezing the boat can do damage. Built these little uh, Raspberry Pi-based computers that uh, we've got them on the boat. Uh, monitoring in different places. There's four of them shown here. We ended up with a total of five of them. And we could monitor the temperature in the engine room, uh, the galley, the stateroom, and the sea -Doo. Actually, the sea not on the boat. That's in my garage. But uh, So I can monitor the temperature and know when we're getting close to freezing, but also to know what the humidity is and to know if we're approaching the dew point. And we've got two de dehumidifiers on the boat that are keeping the boat dry. And we really uh, only need to run those enough to keep the humidity down to the point that there's not going to be any condensation. These computers, they monitor, they send out every couple minutes what the temperature is. Uh, they report up to a computer here at my house, and then I can track it and see and monitor and get alerts on my phone to make sure the temperature is all good. So next, uh, we had the hole in the dashboard where the previous radar was. You can see it looks that. So we came back and ended up uh, replacing it with this panel with some shrink vinyl on top of it that looks a little bit better than the old part that was there. So that's just uh, vinyl wrapped around a piece of starboard that had been routed around the edges and then heat shrink to make it look nice. And then we got hit with a windstorm and uh, we lost the, the window in the side and the window on the other side. So port side, the rear window and starboard side, the front side window. B completely blown out to the point they can't be repaired from a big windstorm, and then the back canvas blew off. I think it's going to be usable for the most part, but we're just leaving it off now uh, for the winter. Just We've got everything covered up underneath, so we're not too worried about water getting in there right now. Sometime in the next year, we've got to get some canvas on it before the winter comes, and or at least before the weather. Uh, or the canvas is a little bit on hold while we wait, while we're getting our engine pay work paid for. So. We did in the master stateroom, there is, or there was just a hole in the wall where a stereo had been apparently at one point when the boat was new, and that was just a hole in the wall. So I ended up finding just a pretty cheap stereo, more to just fill the hole, but uh, to also to be able to have some music or uh, Bluetooth streaming down there and got that all wired in. Just looks a little bit better than having a hole in the wall. Then I took a look at... Uh, our SIMRAD displays have a HDMI output, so I looked at how do we get HDMI output to be able to, on the TV in the salon, see what's happening on our SIMRAD device, on our radar or depth finder or whatever it may be. Uh, and I'm running into a little bit of a problem with HDMI and the length of the cable. So with a 30-foot HDMI cable, it's just long enough to run it from the back of the SIMRAD to this TV kind of hanging down the hallway, but as soon as I go with a 40 or 50 foot cable that's long enough to run through the walls and through all the appropriate wire runs, the length of the cable doesn't work with uh, the SIMRAD. So uh, this is kind of uh, an intermittent uh, issue. I'm trying to figure out how to make that work. But what I may be able to do when we get our SIMRAD up in the uh, flybridge, I'm, that's a much shorter connection to this TV, and I may be able to mirror that uh, here as well. Continuing on with more LED light replacements. 
the one thing we ran into is that uh, with the lights we're getting, there were some 39 lumen lights and some 45 lumen lights, which is how bright they are. Uh, and we accidentally ordered some 39s instead of the 45s, and they really have a yellowed look to them rather than the, the bright uh, white that you have with the, the brighter ones. So we ended up, other than the couple of those that I installed, we ended up returning a batch of those and getting them replaced with the 45 lumens, which made all the difference in the world for the brightness there. Uh, here's just kind of a summary of what we've done on the Simrad stuff. Uh, yeah, big, full refit there on all the electronics, probably more than I want to talk about on the pricing. But we've got the the in-screen display, we've got radar, we've got the autopilot, we've got the VHF radio, we've got the radar up top, and uh, the computer for the autopilot, and just a whole big redo there, getting the boat to have a system that I can trust rather than something that's kind of old and uh, not trustable. Then I found a 23-inch monitor to kind of mount and cover up the area where the radar had previously been, where we put in the uh, sort of textured vinyl look there. And what my plan is, is to have it so that this screen will mirror whatever we have on the flybridge for the NSS SIMRAD display up there. And then the other display will be just showing its own screen. Right now I've got them hooked up just mirroring each other, but the one on the left would mirror what we have on the flybridge so that we can see both screens when we're at the helm down here. But a big difference looking at how it was before, sort of that uh, hunt for Red October era equipment almost, compared to new bright screens with great ability to see what's going on. Not long after we bought the boat, it had a painting here with a not a painting, a picture, a print, uh, with a lighthouse and some big waves, something looked like from the East Coast, probably. And it just really didn't fit the style of the boat in the Pacific Northwest. What we ran into was that the, it was 25 years old and the frame was falling apart. So we took that out. There was just a big blank spot there. Uh, and I found this picture online. I got that mounted. And then after getting it mounted, I kind of realized how bad the... Uh, the stain around the edges of it from rubbing from 25 years on the wallpaper stood out down below there. So next on my list is to replace the wallpaper in this section. One, one fix always leads to another fix, it seems like. Continuing with more interior lights all around the salon, getting that looking really good. And then uh, moving on to some cameras. Uh, getting some cameras mounted on the outside of the boat. And here's kind of the view from two of them on the port side. And the idea is these are hooked up. They're Wi-Fi connected through our onboard Wi-Fi. And I'll be able to have a tablet either in the pilot house or the flybridge so that whenever we're approaching a dock or coming in or even just want to see what's going on out the side, we can use these cameras kind of almost like a rearview mirror or a backup camera to see what's going on. little improvement there, just trying to fill in some of the gaps of what I can and can't see when we're docking the boat. Ooh, and then things got ugly. We had some power problems. It turned into almost a boat fire. Yeah, the good news and bad news. The bad news is we fried our power inlet on the boat, uh, got some moisture in there, somehow shorted out. And the way we found this is I was working on the boat and near the electrical panel smelled burnt plastic. So we tilted the electrical panel forward. I've got a laser thermometer I shot down on the back there to figure out what was hot. And we found the inside of this power inlet port was about 150 degrees, maybe hotter, even hotter on the core of it. This is something that could have very easily led to a boat fire uh, had we not caught it when we did. And I don't know how long it had been there. Yeah, this Navico connector just really wasn't cutting it. So went and got a smart plug and what I really like about the smart plug is it snaps in and it has a rubber seal that seals around the connector and this unit we were able to get a new replacement for the wall or the part that connects into the boat uh, as well as a new cable here we are getting the problem resolved we had to open up the power panel panel and tilt it forward uh, then we were able to cut it off cut it back and pull the wire out the side of the boat get the new connector attached, uh, get it screwed in nicely, and then putting some uh, 4,000 sealant uh, around the edge just to make sure that there's going to be no leaking there. 
And then I went and uh, put a new end on the cable that was fried, cut off a couple feet, uh, just to be able to use that as an extension cord in the future. Uh, looking back at the cost of the replacement pieces to put the end on, it's more than half the cost of the whole cable, I think. So uh, uh, in the future, I think I would just probably buy a new cable rather than uh, trying to replace the ends. And that wraps it up. Summary of one year on the boat. We're headed towards, uh, hopefully, uh, another year of great boating. Wraps up my video. If you're thinking about buying a 25-year-old boat, think about some of the things we've had to fix and repair as we've gone through this. Don't think that buying a used boat is always cheaper uh, than buying one a little bit newer. So, Anyway, uh, we've been able to keep get the boat fixed up and get it in really great shape over the last year. And I look at it and probably something we want to hang on to for a while until we can get to a point that I can get the a bigger boat one day, you know, the whole 10 more feet. Anyway, uh, that wraps it up. Hope you've enjoyed my video and our experiences here with our 4788. Have a great day.